Hey, welcome back to The Daily Show. I have a gentleman here who will be presenting a little bit later on at this, this third national micro-credential summit here in uh, Louisville, sponsored by the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative. And he comes from Texas, and it's Barack uh, Yemis, and he's with the Harmony Public Schools there in Texas, based out of Houston, but serves some other school districts throughout the state. So, Barack, thank you so much for being here. And Describe what your, a little bit about your job and your program. Sure. Thank you, Ron. It's a pleasure being on The Daily Show. <laughs> um, so I work for Harmony Public Schools, and it's a consortium of public charter schools. We manage about seven districts across Texas. Um, and our focus is STEM education. Um, so that's one of our core missions, uh, to educate students around STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math and make sure that they graduate college and career ready and move on to pursuing uh, hopefully STEM degrees in college. And my role in the organization is I previously worked as uh, a high school principal and then moved into the district level managing several different uh, federal grants. I started out with the Race to the Top district uh, grants where we did a bunch of things around personalized learning, blended project-based learning, and then we realized we're leaving adults out of the equation and they need some personalized professional learning as well, which is how we got into micro-credentials. Um, so now Race to the Top is over and now I'm in charge of Teacher Incentive Fund. TIF is another uh, federal grant program that focuses on teacher and leader development and competency-based learning as well as um, compensation structures around competency-based measures. So I'm happy to be at the third annual National Micro-Credentialing Summit, learn from all these great educators, and share what we're doing at Harmony um, across Texas around micro-credentials. So how are you using micro-credentials in Texas? Yes, so um, we developed um, close to 30 different micro-credentials focused on high leverage, high impact instructional strategies around our district initiatives and we clustered them based on different educator roles. Mm -hmm. So as a charter organization, and we're still a young organization, Harmony started back in 2000. Um, so we still have kind of a, a young teaching workforce. Uh, we don't have too many um, experienced educators. So it's important for us to establish a strong induction programs for new educators, new teachers. So we focused uh, micro-credentials around the induction program for new educators, as well as we do have some outstanding educators who are taking on leadership roles, such as being a department chair, a curriculum lead, uh, professional learning lead, uh, mentor teachers, etc. So we focused micro-credentials around how to develop teacher leaders in these different domains. Mm -hmm. and help them build skills and competencies for them to be able to do these leadership roles well mm -hmm. and be productive in terms of you know, helping other educators thrive within Harmony. So you feel like it's working well in Texas? Absolutely. Um, so we still feel like we're in the infancy stages. Uh, this is our second year working with micro-credentials. And this is actually the first year we built out these pathways that are aligned to our um, career pathways, teacher career ladders. Um, so it's really neat seeing that educators feel empowered, that there's a career advancement growth trajectory that's uh -huh. laid out in front of them, and that they have a voice and choice in where their careers might take them and they can navigate how to get there over the course of next one, two, three, five years. So it's up to them to really um, earn those badges, work towards micro-credentials um, and make them more uh, respected and marketable within our consortia to take on additional leadership roles uh, and advance their careers. So your school districts, are they all urban or are there some rural districts? We're mostly urban, but uh -huh. there are some rural areas like we have uh, school, schools in, um, in the valley uh, along the Mexico border, uh -huh. Brownsville, Laredo, 
those are somewhat rural uh, areas. We have schools in El Paso, Odessa, mm -hmm. and Lubbock. So those are kind of really isolated, um, rural, less urban, more rural areas. But yeah, most of our schools. When you mentioned those, my dad worked in the oil fields, so I spent a lot of time in Odessa, Lubbock, and yeah. down at Pecos, and then down there in Laredo and all that area. So that brings back memories to me. Um, what um, the um, what do you see as the future of micro-credentials there in your state? Well, um, the state of Texas is also progressing along micro-credentials, somewhat slowly, um, but at least they're getting there. And we'd like to think that Harmony is ahead of the curve in terms of what we're doing with micro-credentials and other professional learning systems. So the state, uh, Texas Education Agency, is piloting um, some programs that involves micro-credentials, um, endorsements around career technical education, endorsements for counselors, um, and they're um, also in, on the verge of um, leveraging micro-credentials for, ed, uh, for uh, leadership um, pr preparation programs. Um, and as Harmony, we're trying to create endorsements around uh, both STEM education, uh, English language learners, ESL is a big thing in Texas. Um, so I think the state is also making great progress um, and we're excited to see where it takes us. There has been some new developments um, incentivizing teachers uh, like the HP3, HP2424 uh, that involves uh, incentives for teachers as well as micro-credentials. Um, well there were 21 districts or entities that got the race to the top. There were 16 in the first round. The Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative was fortunate to be in the second round with the five. So uh, which group were you in? We're in the first cohort of 16. Okay, yeah. good. And so um, you focus on personalized learning. KVAC also did. So uh, how do you feel about what you were able to accomplish and those, I guess it was probably a five-year grant, yes. and how sustainable has it been? And what are those things that you did that you, they're just so valuable that you're able to keep on going? Yeah, and I've been, by the way, really impressed with KWEC's work through Race to the Top Network. I got to meet uh, great leaders like Jeff Hawkins and Desi Bowling, and got to see a little bit of uh, what KWEC is doing with uh, Race to the Top. And we've done similar things. Uh, we moved into a one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. um, technologies in every classroom. Um, we've sort of created our own model of uh, project-based learning mm -hmm. that scaffolds instruction because we're serving students of all mixed abilities, um, which was inspired by the Buck Institute yeah. model, but we gave it our own flavor. Uh, we launched uh, blended learning environments uh, to really address the learning knowledge and skills gap of our students. Um, so overall, and we've invested in some uh, social emotional learning as well. Um, one of the largest gains has been uh, the advancement of the, the use and the power of data, data analytics, in how our teachers operate within their classrooms, looking at student success, meeting students where they are, and helping them progress along an optimized path for themselves. Yeah. And I think we've been able to sustain um, pretty much all major initiatives. Okay. Um, Project-based learning is still one of our core pillars of instruction. Uh, blended learning has been embedded in our curriculum and instruction in our daily schedules. Um, and we're still one-to-one -one, uh, leveraging adaptive learning technologies in those blended environments. Um, so it's been really neat. Uh, and we've seen lots of growth in terms of students graduating college and career ready, uh, moving on to colleges beyond high school, and persisting through college as well. But one thing we really felt was missing, uh, you know, during the race to the top was investment in, in educators. So we did some great professional learning, but it wasn't personalized like the students' experience. So we thought it was about time that we did a similar learning experience for our educators, uh, which is why we moved towards uh, micro-credentials.
and customized pathways for educators. Okay. Well, Barack, thank you so much for being on our program and for being here, and I thank look you. forward to listening to your presentation later. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you so much for inviting me.